Hi, I'm Johanna. I'm one of the directors of SAS Rights and one of the co-directors of the Shiloh Project. And SAS Rights, together with the Shiloh Project, is here to help orange the world. And we want to introduce you to some of our activists and collaborators. And I'd like to introduce, first of all, Saima Afsal. Saima and SAS Rights make good sense. Saima Afsal is the founder and director of SAS Solutions and a regular contributor to the Shiloh Project. She has drawn inspiration from a life fully lived and from the many skills and experiences she's acquired. And she's made it her mission to give back to her community and to help those who need it most. She has phenomenal energy. She has great vision and imagination. And she has devoted her life to helping all sorts of people. And close to her heart are victims of gender-based violence, not least because she herself was the victim of what is sometimes called a forced marriage. She has since then worked as a consultant. She has earned an MBE. She is a counsellor for the Labour Party in Lancashire. She is a community organiser. She's a teacher. She's many things and now she's applying her knowledge and her drive in the situation of the ongoing COVID pandemic, which has, of course, led to an alarming rise in gender based and domestic violence. And as usual, it's the people already most needy and most vulnerable who are most at risk and most profoundly affected. As Saima says, it's so important to tackle problems before they get massive, to try and nip things in the bud before they get too advanced. And this makes sense for everybody. It makes sense on a personal level. It makes sense on a social level. It makes sense on an economic level, whichever way you look at it. Saima and Saima Afsal Solutions make good sense. So here she is. Let her tell you about herself next. Hello, I'm Saima Absal. I'm the co-founder of uh, SAS Rights and uh, Johanna Stiebert, who would have already explained a little bit about the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence and why we are wearing orange. So we're ready to splash the world with orange. Um, and we want to. We are really passionate about this campaign. We always take part, of course, with the pandemic and COVID. Uh, how we are undertaking activism is a little bit different, and uh, we have been a little bit creative, hopefully. So our wonderful artist Elaine has helped us create some amazing imagery with slogans designed to not just encourage those already working in the arena of tackling gender-based violence, uh, be it research or be it safeguarding or being off offering practical support, uh, be it in the police service or any sector really. This is for society and community. We thought we'd do a campaign that encompasses the spirit of the current times in terms of the mask and use the mask to share the slogans around why it's so important that we don't just walk on by, we don't not speak out about violence in whatever guise it takes. There's a clear link between whether it's domestic violence or whatever form it takes, and the link between human rights denials. I mean, just some of the, just some quick statistics. It's not about statistics alone, but you know, we know that 25% of women experience domestic violence in their adult lifetimes. 16% of men experience domestic violence in their adult lifetimes. So that also tells us it's not just a, an issue for women, but it's also an issue for men. And these conversations to be need to be had to try and understand what's going on. Uh, I mean, domestic violence and gender-based violence is actually a global pandemic that we're all living with. Um, we haven't found a treatment or the cure. Uh, also, we know that those that endure domestic violence, 75% uh, of those that endure it will also have problems in the workplace. 
and also that women who experience domestic violence miss an average of three days per month from their work in, and obviously it gets captured as sickness maybe but so you can see the impact not just on society not just on the individual not just on human rights but also on the economy so this is a problem for all of us globally so whilst in normal times we'll be out there doing talks encouraging people to speak up trying to inspire them what we're saying now is we can still do that no matter where you are uh, you know, at a street level, at a community level, at an individual level, if you see something that concerns you, really, we should be trying to pick up the phone to try and support. And uh, this is really what we're trying to encourage with our campaign, to keep the movement going, to make sure people know it's okay not to just stay silent, to speak up. And if anybody at all has any issues, we're not trying to make this black band specific. If you have, we have an email at the end of this video clip, please do email or try and contact us, whether it's through our Facebook page or Messenger or WhatsApp or indirectly. It's okay, because that's what we be, that's what we do. That's what we've been doing, you know, whether we do research or whether we do training or whether we safeguard individuals or we offer them a refuge or we refer on, we will help you if we can. But you have to try and pick up the phone uh, yourself or if anybody and others, often people can't because they don't know it, uh, what they need to do. And they do, they're dealing with the struggle of surviving abuse. So therefore, if you see it, if you think it's there, you know, it's always better to check than just to walk on by and not say nothing. OK, so we um, thank you for listening and we hope we can have more of you on board and help us with this activism in however big or small way you can join in. Thank you. Bye.